Um, so this is a suggestion of how to measure uh, association between categorical variables, uh, which is something I, I, I find I find out uh, we, we do a lot when analyzing stuff on the web. So for instance, you can have some uh, text or media here and you assign a bunch of labels to it. You can assign emotions, different, uh, they can, well, different emotions or political stances or topics to this content if it is misinformation or not and the idea is that you may be interested in knowing if let's say two topics tend to appear together or not or if one political stance is associated with misinformation so uh, you can have uh, this pro uh, possible situation so you have uh, two so let's say two emotions are associated with each other so when when you can um, uh, detect one kind of emotion is usually the case that you also detect the other one or you can have like a, a certain emotion relate to misinformation. You can have independence between these two uh, uh, categorical variables, these two labels, uh, in the sense that they, they appear together in the same rate as you would expect by chance. Um, or you can have opposition. So. Uh, Let's say uh, the fact that you find uh, a, a given emotion is uh, reduces the chance of finding the other one, right? Um, one common way of checking for association is called association rule learning. Uh, usually, is done through these three steps. Uh, let's say you you first filter by support, which is this formula here. Basically, you take take the number of times the two features A and B appear together and divide by the overall number of uh, samples you have. And that is a point estimate of the probability of getting the two things together. And, but this is not actually a measure of uh, association. This is just a measure of freak, how, how often you, you see these two, two things together, right? Uh, so for instance, if you uh, suppose that a, uh, uh, this uh, feature A uh, it happens for every every sample you have, and so this will be even if un unless b is really small, like the frequency that b appears is really small, you have a large chance of get well the the probability you get that both is high just because a it's all the time it's there right so a uh, similar thing is for confidence uh, this is the how do you calculate confidence is basically a point estimate also of the probability of getting b given you already found A. And this is also basically you're just measuring how frequent is uh, B in a subset of your sample. So that doesn't tell anything about association. And the actual uh, measure that uh, will tell you about association is the, this last step usually. It's called the lift. So this is how you compute the lift. And it's a point estimate of this ratio. So it's the ratio of uh, probability of B, you're finding the feature B given you found A already in the data, uh, uh, divided by the probability of, of finding B. So basically, uh, if the B is independent from A, so this probability here will be the same as the probability of, of just uh, having B, right? And so this ratio will be one, and that's how you say can tell that the uh, um, this is like, if it is one, then you would have no association. If it's uh, above one, you, then you, it's, uh, uh, the two features are associated. And if it's below one, then you, uh, they are opposite, right? Uh, one thing that I highlight here is that these measures are point estimates. So uh, due to statistical fluctuations, of course, uh, you might be tricked, unless you have a lot of data, you might be tricked to think something is... Um, uh, associated when they are not, for instance, or the other way around. Um, so I, I give a few examples of how this uh, association rule learner can, can fail to identify uh, certain relations. The first uh, few examples are just uh, uh, the problem happens at the first layer here of this step because basically you're dealing with things that they don't appear enough times together. I, like if, if two features are in opposition with each other, then of course you won't find uh, them happening together uh, often and you just discard this, this case, right? I have a few other examples, but I, I don't think I'll just pass through them. Um, 
because uh, of time, but I think the last, oops, the last uh, example is more interesting. Okay, because then the problem is here, right? Uh, the, suppose you have two unrelated features, but you have low statistics. So this is the real uh, lift you have here. So it's one. So there is no association between these two features, but you only have ten samples, for instance, of this, uh, of this, uh, of of the data, and you observe the feature A in five of, the, five of them, and your feature B in six of them, and the the, the number of times they appear together is four. Um, and this can actually happen uh, as often. I just, I, I sampled from like, uh, I made a synthetic sampling and I got these numbers here. And you can calculate the lift and it's like, uh, there's a 33% uh, chance or, or the, the, the probability of getting A is, uh, you, would exp you, will think, you would think that the probability of getting A given you, you know, have B increased by 33%, right? So the problem here is that you didn't do any statistical test, right? To, to make sure that this valuable is significant, right? So I'm just showing that uh, in a uh, graphic way. So here you have uh, features that are associated, you have independent features, and you have a feature in opposition, and here you have the lift on a scale, and you have your point estimate here compared to zero or uh, to one, right? Uh, and you can see here that the, this case, the, the features are associated and this the features are independent, but the value of the lift here is higher than in this case, right? And what, what is missing is actually the distribution for your probability of, for this estimate, right? So in, when, you, when you plot the probability distribution here, then it's clear that you have a significant um, a detection of uh, association in this case, whereas in this case you don't have a significant uh, uh, detection, right? So uh, the work plan, so how to solve this? Uh, we're, we're gonna use one measure of variable independence uh, similar to lift, uh, but actually I'll use a different one and I will perform a statistical significance test, but uh, uh, I'll propose here the, let's say the, what I believe is the best way to do this, okay? So lift uh, is a symmetrical uh, measure of those association because Due to the Bayes theorem, uh, if you this is how you calculate lift, so you can uh, switch these things around and you get uh, uh, this this equation here. So lift, for instance, in this situation where B is entirely inside A, let's say every every time you only uh, when you find the, the feature B, you always uh, have found already the feature A. Uh, this is um, for lift, you cannot tell this uh, situation from the situation where A and B are uh, op uh, in opposite, uh, uh, in their switched, right? So uh, this is a problem. Let's say you, you are missing information here. So I, I decided to use added value as a symmetrical, uh, which is asymmetrical. So in, in the sense here, this is a added value is, is uh, the difference between this conditional probability and the and the marginal probability here of finding the variable. And the thing here is that uh, this is not symmetrical. So in this case, for instance, uh, you have this uh, the added value of in this situation is larger than you would have uh, in the opposite uh, situation where where B includes A, right? So. The advantage here is that you can differentiate these two situations. And for the statistical test, uh, you could do like a, a Z test or something like that, but I'll, I'll use Bayesian uh, tests just because I believe it's the best way to do that. So I'll just give you an example. Let's say your search for president of Brazil on, on Google images, you get 10 random in, in, images and you, you want to answer like, how are they depicted, right? So. I uh, just I I didn't actually do uh, ten random images because I wanted to to show some interesting features here. So I, I picked I, I did a little fudge uh, fudging on the selection to to actually show you the advantages of the, of the method. But he, here you have uh, the images and you have uh, the, uh, who the, who the president is and uh, you have uh, an expression. Let's say is serious, smiling, or is arguing, and so on. 
and you want to uh, check, for instance, if there is uh, um, a relationship between uh, one given president and if it is smiling or not, right? And what you do is that uh, you have this, you transform the, the, these two variables, uh, let's say the categorical variable, which is president, you transform into a binary uh, variable and the, the expression you also transform in a, a binary variable here using like one hot encoding. And in this situation here, you know the only known quantity, let's say in this uh, uh, experiment uh, setup, the only uh, uh, variable thing you know prior to the uh, experiment is the quantity of uh, trials you have, right? So in this case, we have 10 trials. And after you got uh, the, um, you got the data, you find this kind of situation, which represents uh, this, uh, this data here, right? So it, it looks like uh, there is no not much information to be get uh, to be got uh, extracted from this because uh, the statistics are very low, but uh, I'll show you uh, we can actually find out something about this, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let's say you 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 want to detect something. Uh, you you'll say something is uh, associated or not if there is a five significance level here, right? Um, oh. So what you do is that you just uh, I'll use oh basically in this uh, setup uh, this uh, the number of times this uh, thing these associations these two variables appear together uh, this is uh, described by a multinomial distribution here right so basically I'm um, I'm just uh, these numbers here are these uh, boxes here and. Uh, what you do is then you, I'll just use the Bayes uh, theorem to flip this thing around and get the probability of the underlying uh, uh, process, like the probability of getting each one of these results uh, from the uh, that uh, we believe the underlying process have, right? The generated the data, and uh, basically when. Uh, Oh, uh, here you have the prior, right? Uh, prior information. Uh, this is this is top part here, uh, which I just assume I do, I have no prior information about the this the the result. So this is a it's a flat prior, which leads uh, this the uh, so this uh, this this um, likelihood goes here, right? And I get the posterior, and uh, what I get for the posterior is basically the same structure, uh, but um, uh, but uh, with a different normalization factor here, right? Um, and uh, okay, so this is uh, actually analytical. I can get this value analytically, but I'm not interested in these this, uh, this, uh, values, these probabilities here of getting each one of the, let's say the no smile and no Bolsonaro here. Um, what I am interested in is that added value. So actually I have to compute from this uh, values here, I have to compute this one. And to get the posterior probability for this uh, uh, quantity here, from this uh, thing here, what I have to do is that I have to do a change of variables and then I have to marginalize a change of variables uh, in, in the case where this uh, is one of the variables I have and then I marginalize over the rest, right? And the problem is, uh, um, I'm not sure, at least I didn't find an analytical uh, st um, analytical uh, formula for this uh, relation, so I used uh, Bayesian MCMC, uh, uh, so uh, Markov uh, chain Monte Carlo method, right? So uh, after uh, doing this process, uh, you get an estimate of the posterior probability distribution of uh, of this added value of uh, finding a smile when you have uh, the pres ex, uh, former president Bolsonaro, right? And this is the estimation we did for the posterior distribution. And you can see that uh, you, it's below uh, the peak here, let's say it's below uh, zero. So there is a, let's say the, the expected value is that you actually have an opposition here. And uh, the p-value, so the, 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 the probability that this uh, underlying 
uh, boost in, in, let's say, this uh, added value here, you can think of as a probability boost of finding, let's say, smile, given that you, you had Bolsonaro here. You can see that uh, it is uh, mostly negative, so the probability of having a, a positive value is less than 5%. So this is actually a statistical significant detection. So it's interesting that uh, from a very low uh, statistics, you can actually find a significant uh, value, um, significant results, right? And uh, the advantage of <clears throat> using this Bayesian framework is that you have actually the precise uh, um, estimate of this probability. We are not like doing an approximation of the, the statistical test you would make if you use like z-test or any other statistical test. This is actually the best information you can have given the data that you you have. Right. Okay. So. Comparing our method with the tra traditional method, which uh, I'm, I'm taking association rule learning, uh, we have a clear and precise information and meaning of what we are computing. So this is like the posterior probability of this uh, distribution for this boost here. And there is nothing else you can get uh, out of the data except this. Uh, we, have, we can compute com confidence intervals for our, our our measure of uh, association, which is different from any other statistical test. We can uh, we have the statistical significance, which we don't have for point estimates. Uh, the, the downside is that uh, because I couldn't find an analytical uh, this, uh, formula for this uh, probability here, uh, I have to do it numerically, so it's a slow process. So. Uh, in this case, taking these properties, it, this is, uh, method is best for when you have few instances because then you re require uh, really precise statistics. If you have many instances, then point estimates are fine, right? And it's also good when you have few candidate associations. So suppose you have, uh, you just want to test for association between, let's say, five variables or something like that. Uh, uh, you have to do a few tests, a statistical test, and due to the time constraint, you can do that. But if you have a thousand uh, associations or, or many, yeah, many thousand associations, then to test for every one of them, you, you're probably better off with a point estimate, which is much faster. Uh, I tested the method with synthetic uh, data, so basically uh, creating random variables A and B uh, with a given uh, true probability of them appearing and a given uh, sample size. And you can vary this in many situations here. This red line gives you the true uh, probability boost that you would have, the added value, like what's the probability of finding A given though you have already found B and how much that changes, right? Um, and you can see that the, the true value is always matching the, the distribution. And the distribution, although uh, it's, it's not that different from a Gaussian, you can see that it's asymmetrical. So z-tests, they assume you are using a Gaussian. There, there is an underlying Gaussian distribution there. So that's why this is the best way to do it, right? So. And just to show off uh, with real data, we tested on emotion on, on tweets. So we had a sample of 500 uh, tweets uh, selected randomly. Uh, we classified them uh, in 30 possible emotional categories. They could overlap. So the fact you, you just don't you don't have to have just one emotion per tweet. You can have more than than one. And so we wanted to test the association between all these emotions here. So we have about uh, 430 uh, candidate associations that we'll test for. And this uh, 400 candidate associations could be done in a, a few hours. So it takes, uh, it's not instant, but uh, it's still feasible, right? Uh, we had some interesting findings, but uh, nothing new, but uh, just showing that uh, if we were working with some, uh, let's say, uh, something that could be lead to something new, we would find the correct uh, things we already know from the literature, right? So uh, the polarity here, you can see, uh, we found that uh, basically uh, negative emotions tend to uh, be associated with uh, negative uh, emotions and positive and negative are usually opposed. 
So uh, here I'm, I'm showing that this boost, uh, when you have no, you, when you have B, what's the probability boost that you, on, on uh, um, emotion A here. So this, for instance, for this case, you have grief and sadness. Uh, the probability of finding grief is very low. Uh, oh, uh, the probability of finding sadness on a tweet is very low. But once you, you already know there is grief, it goes like from almost 0% to about 70%. So this is kind of, uh, it tells you that grief is actually a subset or almost a subset of sadness. So this is an interesting uh, thing you can notice with the method. So I, here I'm showing how this... So the, the width of the bar here tells you this probability boost. So you can you find a large boost here. It decreases, and this is like the opposition when uh, the probability actually goes down. And you can see that uh, so the red uh, uh, emotions are negative emotions, and blue emotion uh, blue here is positive emotions. And you can see that up to here, basically you have this polarity association with except uh, of confusion and curiosity, which is interesting finding as well. Um, when you have confusion, uh, you, it's more likely you find curiosity on the, uh, on the tweet. Negative emotions, we can also see, so you have uh, this opposition between positive and negative, but you also see uh, opposition between uh, different, uh, uh, let's say, modes of negative emotions. For instance, fear and annoyance, or when you find fear, uh, it's less likely that you find annoyance in the same tweet. So it points to different modes of emotion and uh, what I already mentioned here. So uh, this implement, we implemented a code in Python that can uh, do this uh, test for association. It's uh, available here and that's it. Thank you.